Blotarga, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today is Dynamic Effort Squat Deadlift Day. Um, this is week three of this wave, which means it's the heaviest week, and it means next week I go to chains. Uh, and we repeat the process again with chains over a three-week wave. So uh, again, today is the heaviest day for the speed work. As far as what I'm going to be doing in this phase, we increase it. And the thing is, I'm still maintaining the good speed. Like I'm still getting that bar for My bar is actually bending and I can hear it pop at the top, uh, which is good. That's what you want on speed work. Like you need that bar to bend. And this is my stiff bar. So it's not my whippier bar. So it, it's good that I'm getting that effect. That's what I want. It means I'm generating a decent amount of speed. Um, and, and I feel like I can benefit a lot from the dynamic effort work right now because I'm not as explosive as I could be. Um, I did a lot of work in the more moderate rep range uh, this last year. Uh, and even heavy singles and I did Bulgarian. So I had a phase of Bulgarian training for seven months and then we went over to the other. And then of course I had that uh, minor issue of my lower back, which I've rehabbed. So uh, again, the speed work's really gonna benefit me and the additional training volume from all the assistance movements and accessory movements. And there is a difference between the two, uh, which I've explained in their own individual videos over time. A uh, little side note before we discuss this further, my socks, that, that's come up before. Um, a few people have asked, hey, what's with the socks? Why are you wearing these socks? But you guys notice I only wear them on the days I deadlift. Um, these are socks for deadlifting. All right, uh, in powerlifting meets, you're required to wear long socks or shin guards when you deadlift because good bars with good knurling rip skin off of your legs. They rip skin off your legs when they, when they make contact. It's a real problem. And in fact, I forgot to put these on the very first time I sumo pulled with this bar. I forgot to put on the socks. In the very first workout on my warm-ups, I ripped a chunk of skin off. You know, and it was a couple inches of skin too. So uh, it's just a good idea to wear the socks. And because I'm, I'm just wearing these same boots, I'm wearing my Tim's, which are just work boots really. Uh, I'm wearing them to squat and deadlift in right now. Since I'm just leaving those boots on, I don't want to take my boots off, change socks for one exercise and then put a different set of socks on. You know what, it's just one workout, guys. I'm only doing a handful of exercises. Um, there's no need to sit around and change through six different pairs of clothes. You know, let's be realistic here. So I just put the, the deadlift socks on and I leave them on until I'm done with the workout. It's really not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. You know, I, I get two pairs dirty a week. It goes into my weekly laundry, right? Uh, not really a problem. I actually have like four pairs of these. Or I might have three, six pairs. I'm not sure. I lost count. I need to go check. Because I have some of them I never opened. I just keep washing the same two pairs. Uh, I think I have a whole other pack of them I haven't opened yet. But the point is I just leave the socks on. So for those who don't understand what's up with the socks, hopefully that clarifies that and there's no more confusion as to why I have these socks on and what the purpose of them is. There's actually a reason it's not being done for costume effect. Although, since I am Slavic, you guys see my check flag down there? And that's come up to people like, you're only like an eighth check. Actually, my, my dad's entire family are Czech. My dad's name is Blaha, and my grandmother's maiden name was Prajak. Uh, those are both very Czech names. My, my entire side of my dad's family is Czech, so I'm actually half Czech, right? So that's why I've got a Czech flag down there, underneath my American flag below it because I am an American, so that has to come first. So, over to the point, uh, speed squats with the bands. Um, I'm getting the good speed I want, I'm getting that frap at the top, which is good, we need to maintain that. And what I'll do with these over time, some of this stuff will slowly increase in weight over years, but um, I'm really enjoying this style of training, I'm enjoying running this conjugate style training, and it's fun. I actually look forward to my workouts and a few people have noticed that. I mean, there's always some hate and some trolls in the comments, but even some people have said, well, you seem to really be dialed in. Your strength is going up consistently. You're not gaining any body fat. Um, so, I mean, you seem really dialed in with this training. And, and it's honestly, it's because the system can work if it's done right, but because I'm motivated and I actually enjoy my workouts. And I mean, that's one of the things that we have to factor in. And that's one of the problems with something like Bulgarian training. Like, I'll be the first to admit Bulgarian training can work great. It taxes you psychologically in a totally different way. Um, not everyone is built for it. 
They're absolutely not. And while I might enjoy it for periods of time, there comes to a point to where it just beats you up psychologically. And anyone who's done that form of training knows that. And even some other coaches commented in there where some people are saying, oh, that's a lazy way to train. They're like, you haven't done it. Uh, it, it actually takes a, a massive toll on you. Um, so this form of training, I feel, is, is a little more fun because there is some different exercise variation. You get to do all the fun stuff like the bands and the chains and the things like that. Uh, and, and find different weak points and things that you can you can work on and get some variety in and you're doing a variety of different things all the time so it always keeps it interesting and fresh um, and that has its own th own thing going on with it you know you're, you're rotating through different performance elements and you get to focus on each one and then go to another one throughout the week um, it, it really it's like each workout is refreshing and different because all four of your workouts every week are vastly different even if the accessory movements end up being the same. So speed pulls, speed pulls. Um, I decided not to keep increasing the weight on the speed pulls. And it's not necessary because these are done as a second exercise and I'm getting a progressive overload in the other and I'm just gonna rotate these through with bands and chains. And we're just gonna work off percentages. You know, I'll work off percentages of my max and I can base that based upon what my 90% work feels like on my max effort days, right? because we're using other exercises to build my deadlifts, and this is really just a lot of deadlift practice, grip practice, um, and all of that. I'm not as worried about maximizing the weight here, because again, there's just a training volume effect and a speed effect from this, and compensatory acceleration is its own form of progression. So here's what I will say about this. Doing these hook grip and with the bands, my God, this is grip training that I am not used to. Like, I still have to admit, this is my third week in a row doing these against the bands with the hook grip. This just hammers your grip. Like, I feel like this is just in and of itself grip training. Like, this is fantastic grip training. And I really mean that. Like, if, if you guys are, are trying to build your hook grip up, go do a bunch of speed pulls against bands with a hook grip and then come back and tell me that doesn't work those thumbs. Ooh, it's good stuff. Also, I really, really, really notice that, that pull all through my mid traps and my whole upper back because again, the bands, because you're fighting against the bands at the top, but you're pulling from the floor. So you're already having to kind of get into that, that position that puts its own unique pull on the, on the traps that you don't get at the top that you get at the bottom. But as you jerk up, it's those bands try to pull everything back apart with the weight. It's kind of its own unique training effect. Um, and it's different and I can definitely feel that all through my thoracic region thoracic erectors traps everything else you really feel those bands pull hard like you, you absolutely feel that um, plus again the posterior chain you get just from the sumo pull for the speed uh, so again it's its own unique beast um, and I feel like it has its own valuable training effect and what people need to remember again we're just getting more practice at sumo pulling and pulling for speed and everything else and Basically, we build the sumo deadlift off all these assistance movements, uh, the box squatting, everything else. And even what I'm doing with the, the belt squats coming up, if you look at my stance, it's, it's again, replicating a sumo deadlift stance. All right? It's replicating it. So my various assistance movements are also helping to build up uh, this sumo deadlift, which is one of the reasons a lot of people choose to pull sumo who go with this style of training because you're getting more carryover, right? A lot of your main movements and accessory movements carry over so well to the sumo deadlift compared to the conventional that they build your sumo deadlift. And your sumo deadlift can build conventional. There are people who could train this way and not even conventional pull that often and come in and do conventional at a meet if they wanted and be quite good at it. Uh, but again, it's again, it's, this all carries over really well to sumo pulling. So one reason I'm doing it. Plus, again, there's experts who feel, and legitimate credible experts who feel that it is slightly easier to recover from sumo deadlifts. And I know that's a point of contention. Uh, but at least Matt Winning, who has his own advanced degree in exercise science and is a great coach, he feels that way based on his experience. Um, so again, it lets you get a lot of training volume. And, and I am doing a fair amount of pulling volume at this point fair amount of pulling volume because we're doing at least three heavy heavy singles on max effort day and then we do the speed work and both of them are done after squatting 
But again, I feel like the hook grip is coming along. Like this day probably contributes to my hook grip more than anything else. Because I've noticed on the, by the time I get to the max effort days, my thumbs don't even really get sore. From just pulling three heavy singles after some warm ups with the hook grip, like my thumbs don't feel anything. They are lit up at the end of this. So this is training it more than those days are. Um, then we did five by 10 on the pen lay rows. Five by 10 on the pen lay rows. Which, let's get over to discuss accessory movements. And okay, a program like this, it tends to be very, very accessory dominant. And that's one of the things that's, that's coming up. I've had a few people say, hey, are you gonna rotate in repetition blocks instead of band versus chains on your speed work? Um, probably not. I don't think it's necessary because I get a lot of volume from those and then everything else gets thickened up with all the accessory work. And I need to just work on general work capacity because I've done lower volume training for years I feel like all the additional training volume is going to be beneficial for me to get into better shape and to improve my body composition. So for me, it's just going to be very, very accessory movement dominant. And that means even big accessory movements. Like my accessory movements aren't all little tiny exercises. Some are. But what are we doing at this point? Belt squats, rows, incline bench, JM press. Glute ham raises, good mornings, those are all big movements. And I'm doing those for a lot of sets of 10 and things like that, right? We're doing all those because, and that's where we're getting a lot of total training volume adding to our max work and dynamic effort work. It's to thicken everything up, it's to make sure that every muscle that I need is thick and growing and that I have maximum body composition. And, and that's one of the things that's come up too as far as people saying, hey, are you gonna cut? Like, no, I don't need to cut for now. I'm gonna recomp. And I feel like I think I'm starting to get a hair leaner staying at the same body weight. And that's the point. When I look at my height, in all honesty, I don't know that I'm going to ultimately be competitive at my, my max size in a lighter weight class. I mean, we have to be realistic here. It's better to be an inch shorter than everyone you compete against in a weight class. Every coach and expert knows that. The whole formula is based on that. Um, given that I'm 5'9", I might be best to get as big and as lean as possible in the 220 and legitimately lean and legitimately bigger, which means I probably need to put on another 10 pounds of muscle. And that will have to replace body fat. All right, and, and that might be what I do for a while. But what I'm going to do at this point, my body seems to really like staying in the high two teens. Like it's actually been pretty comfortable staying a hair under 220 now. I'm comfortable with it. I'm making gains with it. I need to just ride that out. And as long as I can do that and recomp and without gaining any body fat, that's what I need to do. This feels like a comfortable weight for my body. It's happy with the set point. And if I can gain strength and keep thickening up all my weak links and stay at maintenance calories, then you're staying at the same body weight that you will have to lose more body fat. And yes, guys, I know I've got, I got loose skin. And apparently that really upsets some of the people who hate me that I, I've actually doing these shirtless and they can see my loose skin and it made them throw up in their mouths and everything. And you know what? I don't care. Get over it. You don't have to watch. <laughs> why don't you go do something successful? Why don't you go lose 100 pounds of fat? Why don't you guys get on here and train without a shirt? Yeah, quit worrying about it. Go do something. Make your own training videos of yourself lifting. But... I got these belt squats set up, and I want to thank Nicola Ella, uh, my bro. He'll, he'll see this video. I already gave him a shout out on social media. Of He has his own way of doing these, the way he sets it up with these belt squats, because he loves them also. And I got some good pointers there. As you guys can see, I've totally changed the way I set these up, and look how much easier it is for me to get up and down and get into it. Um, and I really just can't use that, that um, like plate holder and stuff I have, that's not the way to do it. I went ahead and I got a belt that's rated to hold 300 pounds so I can get stronger at these and I just use my safeties to climb up with so that I hold on to those to get up onto my blocks, right? And I, I just did three sets of 10 after my warm-ups. We don't have time for warm-ups in here. These videos get too long. I have time for warm-ups uh, to even film those. But once I got those set up, I did three sets of 10 and I know this isn't that heavy. I'll get stronger at this. I'll keep increasing my work capacity at this because I've got to increase my work capacity on all these accessory movements and in general. And that's how we do it. We just keep adding volume. 
And I'll get stronger at these, and as I get stronger at these, we're getting more quad work in. Um, because what are we doing here? I do an enormous amount of axial loading, right? I do so much squatting and deadlifting every week right now that it could affect recovery. But I know that my quads need more hypertrophy. I know that I need more things that will carry over specifically, and this is an assistance movement to the squat that will let me get more quad training volume that doesn't load my spine, but also trains my joint angles in a way that has direct carryover to a squat and direct carryover to a sumo deadlift. So this makes this not an accessory movement. It's an, it's an accessory movement in that it will hypertrophy my quads more, which need to get bigger, but it's an assistance movement that has direct movement pattern carryover to those lifts. So even though I'm doing it with light weight and higher reps for volume, we're still getting joint angles and movement patterns that will carry over to those, but it's letting me unload my spine a bit, right? Because it's the plates are hanging in traction there um, off my hips. We're getting a, a different effect there. So we're not getting the negatives as far as that goes. But again, unlike a lot of machines, this is going to force me into the same lower body positions that a squat will. And so again, we get full transfer. All the muscles are being trained in the same way they would be on the squat in my lower body. And so again, fantastic, fantastic exercise for that. And I skipped good morning today because I realized, man, my work capacity is just, this is all I could handle today. Uh, I'm getting to that point in my week. And so I did a bunch of glute ham raises in between doing this voiceover and I'm gonna do some more sets of those uh, instead of my good mornings today. And then I'll do my abs and all of that. And tomorrow is my bench day, which is a lot of volume for my upper body. So I hope this has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.